Welcome to this weekend's work where we're fitting chain plate backing plates for the main mast in the salute. I've got three large sheets of FR4, forwards, middle and aft. So three chain plate bolts. This is the easy one. It's clear in terms of access, but you can see the problem that we've had worst on one of the mizzen ones where the backing plate is actually two thin strips of metal and they get slightly misaligned and as soon as they're misaligned they don't have the same resistance to bending and that's where we got the cracking around the mizzen chain plate this one here is for the cap shroud so this is the one that goes right to the top of the mast it's the most important shroud on the sides of the boat and it has this l-shaped metal bracket through bolted to this bulkhead to transfer some of the load from the deck all the way down here we're going to have to take this off cut a hole that size in this bulkhead so that our backing plate can go right the way through and then the forward one here again we're going to have to cut out part of the bulkhead to get our backing plate through and as we cut it out hopefully this glass fibre that's been added around the bolt we can cut that off and get the bolt out and uh, then fit the, the backing plate in the same way A beautiful sunset at half past three and it's been a beautifully quiet sunny day here on Anglesey cloudy on the mainland but beautiful here and so we have our three chain plate bolts now out that's the hole that's the bolt that was in it with a washer this is the one from the cap shrouds this is the forward lower so tonight I've just drilled out the holes slightly larger we'll just leave those sitting in there to stop the draft tonight it's not expected to rain so I'm not going to do anything else scenes of devastation in our cabin but what we have achieved is that's where our first backing plate is going to go. There is the middle one for the cap shroud, which goes through that slot, sits nicely. And here is the one for the forward lower, which again goes through that slot into the forward heads. So we've cut the um, holes large enough to fit the backing plate and then the knot for the chain plate loop and these backing plates are going to beautifully carry the loads because what you have on these rivals is to there is all part of the hull the hull comes up and over as a shelf and then the deck sits on top of this shelf so here you have the thickness of both the shelf attached to the hull and the deck so already this is very strong and with a huge backing plate epoxied onto it any upload from there should neatly be transferred down the hull 
absolutely no worries about the strength of that one or the forward one because there were no problems before with these absolutely tiny backing plates our backing plate is 30 centimeters long so and the full width of that shelf this one where it was tied down well we have some skepticism about how well this piece would have transferred the load down onto that bulkhead you can see where there's no paint that's where there was a strip of wood that this was bolted to but it doesn't seem to us that mechanically that's very well suited to transferring loads we know that a, a long strip like that most of the load is onto the very first bolt not onto the later ones so we're just going to have a little bit of a think once we've got the backing plate in place which is enormous for this one it's about 60 centimeters 600 millimeters long um as to what, what we want to do in terms of tying it down obviously this bulkhead is still connected here and here we'll have to have a think about what we want to do to connect up the uh, chain plate backing plate and how are you with today's progress Jane? I'm very pleased I was worried that that uh, fiberglass in bolt would prove much more difficult to get out so I'm really happy we've managed that and I think it's sensible to leave the epoxying till tomorrow when it's slightly warmer um, both for us and for the epoxy <laughs> what we don't normally see on camera is how Jane and I spend hours discussing what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and changing our minds and coming up with what we feel is a better solution and that's happened again last night and this morning and so I'm going to show you now what we're going to do in terms of fitting these backing plates which should work better so let's just swivel the camera around and show you so what we've decided to do is to start by drilling these chain plate bolt holes out to 44 millimeters with this hole saw which is the maximum size we want them to be and the reason we want them to be that size can be seen on these ones we did for the mizzen so here that's drilled to 44 millimeters filled with thickened epoxy and when we want to put the chain plate loop in it we just drill out 22 millimeters of that 44 and so we've got a good covering of epoxy around the hole here we want to do that straight away so we'll put this hole to 44 millimeters then this will have a backing plate on the top of it so it doesn't fall all the way through and we will put a 22 millimeter hole which is the final size in the actual backing plate when we then fitted the backing plate up under this deck and this bolt's holding it in place for the epoxy to start curing as soon as it's cured enough for the board to be fixed in place we can remove these bolts and then fill this hole and the 44 millimeter hole with the thickened epoxy which will then have a chemical bond to the backing plate epoxy we get a much better fitting all the way through and we end up today with this being filled and solid and uh, no way for water to get in now when we're ready to fit the chain plate loops we just drill the hole in the middle of that thickened epoxy and uh, install the chain plate loop time to get on with some drilling So below now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twen
three 44 millimeter holes in the Deccan shelf and we've held up the three backing plates to mark where those holes are drawn a center. Dave's busy um, sorting out the next hole saw for the new holes that we're drilling in the backing plates and here on the deck you can see the cores that came out when he drilled out this is the um, deck shelf is that no. right no that is the deck and this one the thicker one is the deck shelf so you can see that it, it's quite a substantial thickness of fiberglass that we're going through and Dave finds that the slowest part of the process is getting those cores out they get jammed in the hole saw and it's difficult to get them out Jane is back to mixing thickened epoxy. Meanwhile, these holes have now just had the edge chamfered off a little bit. It's not at all important really for this job because there's no danger of the epoxy pulling through the backing plate. But just so it gets a better grip, just roughened around at the edge. We've got a little bit of wood as a huge washer. So that can go there and pull up the backing plate. Everywhere inside is now prepped. That's all been cleaned with acetone so that the epoxy is going to grip well. There's our backing plates with holes in. We had a slight problem that I broke the hole saw pilot arbor bit. Um, that was a Milwaukee one. It was a really nice hole saw, but the uh, bit broke and screw fix didn't have any replacements. So we had to buy an extra hole saw set. You can see there. That is probably done. Yes, the epoxy is ready. Okay, the first backing plate is in position. That was 200 grams of resin, 100 grams of hardener and then a whole bunch of colloidal um, thickener. Number two is on and we've got two fan heaters. So it's absolutely baking in here. The resin had gone hard again and so it's hard to pour enough out. So we're just heating up the resin before making our last batch for that last backing plate. The main saloon has got so hot to get the epoxy to set that the GoPro shut itself off. But we have now removed the bolts because the epoxy is holding the backing plates up and therefore been able to fill the large holes to deck level very roughly tonight because it's going dark and we can sand it later. So those are ready now, they're sealed. We can leave them like that until the spring and then we will drill a smaller hole through the resin for the chain plate loop to go through. Welcome to the sauna. Two fan heaters keeping this really hot. There's the forward chain plate. The, the duct tape is stopping the epoxy coming through the hole in the backing plate. There's the main cap shroud backing plate and there's the aft lower. We managed to get all the gaps around the edges with epoxy oozing out of them so very happy and the epoxy is definitely set uh, on these. We're just waiting now for the heat to travel up through the deck and set the epoxy that uh, is filling those holes on. Deck. That's ready now for the chain plate loops in the spring. Just a little reminder, we will have a great big knot coming there and the loop going through the deck 
with a low friction ring in the end of it and then the shroud will tension to that. So down below, knot, up above, loop, tensioned to the shroud. So our Dyneema is go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up.